Hello all. Welcome to this first video lecture on proving techniques. In this lecture, we are going to consider the topic mathematical induction. But first, let us understand what is proving techniques. Now, proving techniques means that whatever we work we do, uh, like however we do, we need someone to check the correctness of it. We need uh, something to uh, make it pretty sure that whatever we are doing is right. So this is all what is proving techniques. So in this particular lecture, we are going to understand that using a particular way, we are going to justify our work. So that particular way is known as mathematical induction. So let's get started. Now, what is mathematical induction? So mathematical induction is an essential tool for proving the statement that proves an algorithm's correctness. The general idea of mathematical induction is to prove that a statement is true for every natural number n. So what does it mean? So suppose I've given you an example or I've given you all an algorithm to code. Suppose I've asked you to code uh, uh, the algorithm for uh, calculating the factorial. So when you are done with calculating the value of factorial, what do you think? How will you proceed to check the correctness of it? So you will take some numbers to check it. Okay, is the value coming right? So you'll take some small numbers first to check it. Okay, then you will try for some higher numbers. So now why do you take different range of numbers just to verify the correctness of the algorithm? So that is nothing but mathematical induction. So what you do naturally to check the correctness is what is an algorithm uh, doing on its own. Okay, so let's understand how this works. Now, there are certain ground rules in mathematical induction. The first one is induction hypothesis. Now, in this particular hypothesis, it's nothing but we first define the rule. Okay, we have to define the rule we want to prove for every n. So, this rule is nothing but uh, we are defining a function. So, let's call that function as f of n. Now, the second step is induction base. Now, proving this rule is valid. That means we have to prove that the function we created, f of n, is valid for some initial value so we can say it's an initial value or we can say it's a starting point so this is often proven by solving the induction hypothesis f of n for n equal to 1 or whatever initial value is appropriate and the third step is the induction step now proving that if we know that f of n is true we can step one step forward and assume that f of n plus 1 is correct that means we are going to have some assumption and then using that assumption we are going to prove that the next step is valid that means we are going to say that for a particular value of n let's assume that the hypothesis is right and then we are going to check whether f of n is valid okay the next step so let's get started and let's understand this with the help of, help of some examples now i want you all to look at this particular uh, like numbers okay so you might be able to see some patterns in it uh, i hope you can find out some of those patterns and hold it hold it with you all okay because we are going to use it later we are going to understand how this pattern is going to help us later okay so let's get started now so proof by induction again so this is the first example wherein my function f of n is actually s of s of n wherein we are going to find the sum of first uh, like few natural numbers from 1 to n Okay, so it's just sum of integers. Now, in this case, what do we do? So the base case, we have to prove that it is true for s of 1. Then we have to assume that it, it will be true for some value k. So we are going to assume it for s of k. And then finally, the induction step, that is what we are going to show that it is true for s of k plus 1. Okay, so now we need to have a function first. That is a hypothesis, right? So we know that we have to make a sum of some natural numbers okay starting from 1 till n so to make that particular formula okay we all know that if we want to have some uh, sum of natural numbers from 1 to n the formula is s of n equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2 okay so we know this formula already now what is the formula about the formula is of arithmetic progression so now we have f of n so let's start with the base case now so what happens in the base case is that we first check it for the base value okay so the induction base so that means we check it for s of 1 now what is s of 1 so we see that if it is the first value it we are checking for the addition from 1 to n so if it is just 1 so the output should be 1 so as we put uh, replace 1 uh, 
in n in the formula the value that we get is 1 so obviously the step is true okay so we have proved that the induction uh, step or the base step sorry is working okay now let's proceed with the induction step now in this step we need to prove that if the formula if it applies to s of n then let's assume that it might also be true for some value k so s of k will be equal to k into k plus 1 divided by 2 so we are doing nothing but we are just replacing n by k now we have assumed it for some value k now the final step is to check it for some value k plus 1 so let's get started s of k plus 1 equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus something something till k plus k plus 1 okay so we have a k plus 1 which is the last element now we know that the formula for 1 as uh, sum of 1 to k is k into k plus 1 divided by 2 so you can see this particular entire left hand thing can get converted into k into k plus 1 divided by 2 plus k plus 1 now obviously uh, to match the denominator we are going to multiply 2 as well as divide by 2 now as soon we have the, the denominator as 2 for both the components what we are going to do we are going to take it out okay as a common thing now we can now again see that uh, k plus 1 is common in this particular equation so i'm taking k plus 1 out and uh, finally what is left is k plus 2 now this k plus 2 can be represented as k plus 1 plus 1 now can you see the formula that we have obtained for s of k plus 1 is almost similar to s of k wherein for k we are just replacing it by k plus 1 so can you see it's almost similar okay so now in this induction step we can clearly see that we have kind of proven okay that the formula is the same so obviously it is if it is uh, okay for s of k it would be all right for s of k plus 1 okay so now how did we go about we saw the base case when we proved it for s of 1 we assumed for s of k and in the induction case okay we proved it okay that even if we change k of 2 k plus 1 okay we are coming out with a similar formula okay and that is how we proved it for s of k plus 1 now there's something to be noted in this okay do you remember i had shown you the pattern right so in that pattern you could have seen that s of n plus 1 is equal to s of n plus n plus 1 okay like uh, look at this example you can see s of 3 is what s of 2 plus 3 okay then s of 2 is what s of 1 plus 2 and then plus 3 which is there over here okay similarly s of 1 is 1 so finally we are getting the value 6 okay now so this is it uh, this is proof by induction so let's understand proof by, proof by induction by one more uh, form uh, like example okay so now in this case what are we going to take is let's make the first function okay right the f of n okay now what is f of n in this case the sum of x and its successor is odd so that means we are going to consider some integer x and then i'm going to say that the successor of that integer if we add them both then the outcome will be an odd integer okay so this is what we are going to prove so let's take the base case now in the base case consider for f of 1 that is how we start let's replace x by 1 so this uh, the sum would be what okay so we are going to add x with its successor so the successor is x plus 1 so you can clearly see here i'm adding what x with x plus 1 when i do that 1 plus 1 plus 1 the output is going to be 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3 is odd so we can say that okay that for some integer uh, for some k okay which are uh, integers okay it will always lead to 2k plus 1 okay which is equal to, which is a odd number okay so you can see that we got the value 3 when k was equal to 1 so that is a basic uh, formula of being odd that if a number is odd it should be always be equal to what something which is 2k plus 1 okay so now uh, let's understand uh, let's uh, go ahead uh, so let's go ahead with the assumption that is the next step so assume that f of x is true for some value x in the last example we had taken some value k so we are saying it uh, for some value x then we can say that x plus x plus 1 is odd now the induction step that means you have to check the same function f of x for f of x plus 1 so let's get started we just uh, replace the value of x to x plus 1 so this is the formula and we are just changing it from x to x plus 1 so you can see x plus 1 plus x plus 1 plus 1 
So you can clearly see it is x plus 1 plus x plus 2. So this formula is of what? It is coming out to be f of x plus 1, right? Now, so you can clearly understand that since x plus x plus 1 is odd, okay? And so this was uh, assumed, uh, right, in the assumption state step that x plus x plus 1 is odd okay and what are we doing in the just step before this okay we are adding value 2 to it okay you can see the two values that are marked in blue okay so this plus 1 was added and this plus 1 was added so obviously if x plus x plus 1 is odd and if you are adding a value 2 to it okay this will obviously lead to an odd number so again we have uh, like completed the proof and we have again proved that by induction we can say that the f of x function holds true so uh, let's conclude the thing okay so now mathematical induction is a technique for proving something is true for all integers starting from a small one okay we started from a for small one we take it like f of one or we can also take f of zero in some cases now a proof consists of three parts wherein what do we do we prove it for the base case first by taking zero or one then we assume it for some integer k okay then with that assumption we hold that assumption and we show that it is the same for k plus one okay and now where it can be used it can be used uh, for complexity and uh, correctness analysis okay so this is it uh, thank you so much uh, i hope you all have understood the topic uh, happy learning and enjoy algorithms thank you